In the northwest corner of the United States, jutting out from the coast of Washington, the Olympic Peninsula separates Puget Sound from the Pacific. Skirting its coastline, a modern highway joins together settlements of every size, from tiny logging camps to thriving cities. Across the Sound lies Seattle while the surrounding waters are the shipping lanes that carry commerce to the Orient. But despite the bustling activity on all sides, the primitive heart of the peninsula remains untouched by civilization. Here in this vast virgin wilderness live the Olympic elk. Each spring, these majestic animals migrate from their winter home in the lowlands to their summer grazing grounds high among the topmost peaks. In this long and arduous journey lies another true life adventure. The Olympic range is as rugged as any in the world. Glaciers fill these alpine basins with permanent ice. While the surrounding peaks, crowned by Mount Olympus, form a barrier against the clouds that drift in from the sea. The resulting snowfall is extremely heavy, and during the winter months, deep drifts choke the mountain passes and cover the upland meadows. But with the coming of spring, the annual thaw begins. By late May, the air is filled with the sound of rushing water. At this time of year, the mountain meadows are still deserted. But from June to October, they'll become the feeding ground, hunt and battleground. Meanwhile, the herd is still in winter quarters in the cloud-filled lowlands. The rainfall here averages 150 inches yearly. No wonder it's called the rainforest. Of course, with so much water, everything grows in profusion. Moss is everywhere. Trees grow from trees, for seeds take root wherever they fall. When clouds of pollen from the fir trees drift through the forest, they mark the passing of spring. Now instinct reminds the Olympic elk it's time for their trek to the high country. Their departure always follows the same pattern. The bulls are the first to leave, usually about two weeks before the others. Sporting their new velvet-covered antlers, they're anxious to be on their way. The cows must delay their departure until the new calves are strong enough for the strenuous climb. The calf is generally born in June. At first, he's completely helpless. His only defense is to lie perfectly still whenever an enemy prowls the forest. His spotted coat helps him blend into his surroundings, but sometimes camouflage isn't enough. This time, the bear is coming much too close. A pair of kindly neighbors sound a warning. Mother rushes to the rescue. 
Deliberately, she draws the bear's attention to herself and leads him off on a false trail. With her superior speed, she soon leaves the bear far behind. And when he finally gives up the hopeless chase, she returns by a different route. But of course, one can't always depend on mother. There are times when a fellow has to stand on his own feet even though that's quite a problem. In a matter of days, these wobbly little legs must be ready for the long, grueling trek. He gets plenty of advice from the sidelines. And it seems to be doing some good, for he gains strength and confidence with every step. Well, almost every step. When the calves are strong enough, the herd gathers for the trek. Each calf stays close to its mother, and each family has a place in line. The march begins, and the calves soon learn they must keep the pace. Once underway, nothing can stop the advancing herd, or turn it from its chosen course. Not even a flood-swollen river. Here, the youngsters are strictly on their own, and often in fording these swift, glacier-fed streams, tragic accidents occur. But this time, the crossing is safely made. And without pausing to rest, the herd reforms and pushes on. Usually, a few bulls may be found with this group. But they're the old men of the herd, and so they just tag along and let the cows lead the way. Altogether, the journey takes about a month, and the calves stand up remarkably well, as the herd meets and surmounts one obstacle after another. Quick meals are taken along the way, but pauses are brief, and the overall pace never slackens. From a respectful distance, an old enemy keeps tabs on the herd. The footing on these rock slides is treacherous, and there's always a chance one of the youngsters will break a leg and be left behind. The clear, cool waters of a mountain lake are too tempting to be ignored. For one refreshing moment, all the hardships of the journey are forgotten. For most of the herd, the bath is just a splash and a But here is one lady who's determined to make a thorough job of it. invites himself to the party, the elk decide it's time to leave. And so he soon has the pool all to himself. After his plunge, he likes nothing better than a brisk rub down. Each 
Each year, the elk must find a new route to their mountain meadows. It's no easy task, for across this raw and rugged wilderness, there are no game trails, not even a footpath. Only the mountain goat is entirely at home. The calf would like to make friends with this shaggy stranger in white, but the goat is much too shy. He's not interested in even a passing acquaintance. And that's the end. The goal is in sight. With the long trek over, the herd finds a new burst of energy. Mothers and youngsters alike scamper gaily across the snowfield. A permanent resident up here is a bright little fellow called a marmot. The hubbub has brought him out of his winter hibernation. He's seen the elk's homecoming celebration before, but it's always a good show and well worth watching uh, from a safe distance. The adults are the first to slow down. Some remember their dignity, others give up from sheer exhaustion. The calves, however, will continue their capering till they drop. Eventually, even the youngsters are ready to call it a day. But then mother gets her second wind and the sport begins all over again. Hearty exercise means healthy appetites, and it's a welcome pause when playtime gives way to nursing time. Strangely enough, this alpine country is a wonderland of wildflowers, and they grow in the most unexpected places. Reaching for the sunshine, they simply push the melting snow aside. There's nothing delicate about these hardy specimens. They thrive on ice water and sub-freezing temperatures. Some even persist in bloom beneath the frigid waters of the mountain streams. The melting snow uncovers whole meadows of lilies, bear grass, violets growing among the rocks, Indian brush, daisies, avalanche lilies, and many others less familiar. In fact, there are more than 20 different species here that may be found nowhere else. But all this beauty is lost on the Olympic elk. On these remote slopes, they seek only a pleasant pasturage and seclusion. During these next few weeks, the herd will spend most of its time in grazing. Between meals, some of the cows find relief from the summer's heat and the snow patches that still remain in the protective basins. 
Meanwhile, in their bachelor's quarters along the high ridges, the bull elk have preferred to keep their own company. Even the arrival of the cows and calves has left them quite undisturbed. There's plenty of grass and water here, and for the moment at least, they're completely satisfied. And so the summer passes in a life of ease for all. With the approach of autumn, the tranquil scene changes. For now, the mating urge drives the bulls out of seclusion. There's tension in the air, and soon the mountains will ring with their furious bellowing. The bulls vent their anger on anything that happens in their path, and those that haven't already done so hurriedly the velvet from their antlers. These are the weapons that will decide the grim battles of the mating season. They're solid bone and needle sharp. The younger bulls engage in training bouts. But nobody gets hurt, for at this age it's just a good-natured game. They practice all the fundamentals, offense, defense, footwork and balance. The sound of battle attracts spectators. To the marmots, this looks like great sport, so they decide to have a go at each other, too. Suddenly, the fun is over. Sharp ears have caught a distant sound. Spine tingling. Ear. The wild bugling of the Olympic elk. Soon the mountains echo and re-echo. Bulls everywhere pick up the challenge and hurl back their defiance. In this way, each bull announces the end of his bachelorhood. Now the rounding up of the cows begins. The male will collect as many wives as he can find. Then it becomes a problem of keeping them together and under his control. He will start with two or three, but will try to increase the number to a dozen or more. In his skirmishes with other bulls, he may acquire a whole new batch or lose those he already has. To add to his troubles, most of his wives are the roving kind. And so beset with a growing domestic problem, he snatches a last hasty lunch. From now on, there will be little time for meals. This bull has collected the largest harem of all, and so far he's holding his own. He manages to keep his rivals on the run. And at the same time, he skillfully maneuvers his new harem to a nearby snow patch.
This is his domain, to have and to hold. But that won't be easy. A bull with too many wives is asking for trouble, and this fellow must have 50 or more. Still, no serious challenger comes forward. Just a yearling or two, and they scamper away at the first threat. But now, around the fringe of his snow patch, other challengers begin to gather. These outriders range from ambitious youngsters to seasoned veterans. They have one thing in common. All are without wives. For situations like this, the outriders have a definite strategy. One by one, they move in to bait the herd bull. It's their plan to keep him rushing here and there until they drive him into a frenzy. The lord of the snow patch has a strategy too, one of bluff and bluster. He's hoping desperately to get rid of his tormentors without being forced into actual combat. If he leaves his harem unprotected, all is lost, and he knows it. The wiser heads among the outriders aren't looking for a finish fight either. They know that sooner or later, one of the impulsive youngsters will tire of the game and call for a showdown. And sure enough, here he comes. Deliberately, the challenger crosses the line. Realizing his bluff has been called, moves in. This is it, the real thing, a fight to the finish. Among the outriders, there's complete satisfaction. It's all according to This is what they've been waiting for. The herd bull finish this up quickly and get back in protected water. Way too late. The ox are beginning to move in. And while the Lord of the Snow Patch is busy defending his hide, the outriders are busy dividing his harem. It's a gallant battle, a youngster's strength against a veteran's skill. Suddenly, in a furious struggle, slashing antlers lock and hold. Despite their mightiest efforts, the bulls can't break free. For the hapless warriors, it's a desperate situation. But for the departing harem, it's not worth even a backward glance. Now the grim battle can have but one ending. Unless can somehow break the deadlock, they will both die of starvation. It's happened here before. The young challenger puts everything he has into one last furious lunge. Youth and stamina claim the victory. Exit the vanquished. Sadder, wiser, and firmly resolved that in the future he'll be satisfied with fewer wives. The new champion learns his lesson too. Mournfully, he surveys an empty snow patch and discovers that if valor wins the victories, discretion wins the wives. But he'll have no second chance, at least not this season, for now winter takes possession of the high country. 
With the excitement of the mating season over, the herd begins the long trek back to winter quarters in the lowlands. The lonely champion is the last to leave. Next year, older and wiser, he'll leave the fighting to the impulsive youngsters. With his departure, a cycle in the life of the Olympic elk comes to a close. And with it, another true life adventure.